we've been talking about the Baron working to colonize people in the Carolinas and his work with John Lawson. Let us now read the Baron's own account of his trip with Lawson when they encountered the Indians. One day, as the weather was very fine and there was a good appearance that it would last, Surveyor General Lawson proposed to me to go up Noose River, hinting that there are plenty of wild grapes which we could gather for refreshing ourselves. This statement, however, was not strong enough to prevail on me. A few days afterwards, he came back giving better reasons. He remarked that we could see in the meantime whether the river may be navigated in its higher course and that a new road to Virginia might be laid out there, the actual route being long and difficult and likewise visit the upper country. I had indeed been anxious for a long time to know and see by myself how far it is from here to the mountains. I accordingly resolved to take the trip and we took provisions for 15 days. I, however, asked Mr. Lawson whether there were any danger on account of the Indians, especially on account of those we did not know. He answered that there was no danger in that direction as he had already taken that trip once that surely there were no savages living on that branch of the river, that they used to be very far from it. But in order to feel all the safer, we took with us two Indian neighbors, which we knew well, and to whom I had done much good with two neighbors to row. And please remember, folks, this was written in the 1700s. Very different time. One of the savages knew English, and we thought, as we had those two Indians with us, we had nothing to fear from the others. It had not rained for a long time. The river was not very high, and the current all the slower for it. The whole day we went up the river. By night we pitched our tents near the water, and early in the morning we proceeded further. May your lordship please to take notice that Surveyor General Lawson required my horses saying that we could go through the woods to see where the road to Virginia might be, might be begun most conveniently. At first I would not consent. At last he asked for only one, which I granted. One of the Indians went on horseback by land, but he was compelled to cross the river at one place, which was our misfortune, for he came to the great village of Katachna. Kat Kat I have no idea how to say that. Katechna. There he was once asked where, what he was doing with that horse. They do not use horses in these parts. He answered that he was to bring it back to us and that we were going upstream. This immediately alarmed the inhabitants of Katechna. They crowded together with the whole neighborhood, kept the horse, and told our Indian that he ought to warn us at once not to advance further in their country, that they would not allow it, and that we had to turn back by the orders of the king who resided there. I said that I did not like the looks of things altogether and that we ought to turn back at once, but the surveyor general laughed at me. Such a number of Indians came out from the bushes, some even swimming across the river and overtook us so suddenly that it was impossible to defend ourselves for fear of being killed on the spot or cruelly mistreated they accordingly took us prisoners, plundered our things, and led us away. I'll leave you hanging there. In the next video, we'll discuss more of what happened in the story with the Indians.